So I've been pulling wires for uh, quite a few days now, and my, my fingertips are trash. And I used to not mind Cat5. It was easy to unwind, and then all you had to do to get it straight was just take and pull it out, and you could get a nice straight wire with your fingertips. And that, that is not the case with Cat6. Well, I did buy 25 patch cables, but Amazon sent me the five pack instead of the 25 pack. So I have to return this and I can't wait. So I've been sitting here making uh, patch cables all day. And I found something that works and I've never seen anybody else do it. And I figured, you know what, make a video, show people. I was straightening cat six wires and I had just finished one end and it was good and I'm doing the other end and I go to straighten it out and I strip the shielding off of two wires and these are cut to fit. So there's no service loop. I couldn't just, you know, start over. I had to chuck the whole thing. That made me sad. And I realized I'm a jeweler and I have tools and this is called a jump ringer. This is a Pepe jump ringer. And what it does is it's for making jump rings and you can also make springs with it. And we use it all the time for getting nice little bundles of coiled wire. And it works really good. The thing I realized is that if you run a jump ringer in reverse, it uncoils the wire. I gave it a shot and it actually works really well. There's a couple of drawbacks with it, which I figured out with my second iteration of this. What we can do is, oh, before I do that, let me put my, uh, my retainer to keep it from snagging on everything. Should have done that before I peeled that back because I cut a nice little angle on everything and now I've got a flush end and it never wants to go over these you know what I'll just go from the other end because I can still do that and I'll go ahead and fit the other side while I'm thinking about it yeah having a little 45 on it makes it so much easier to work onto this thicker cat 6 cable so now I've got my cable stays but I use my uh, Lindstrom 8160s because they have a long jaw so I can cut at a 45 and not miss a strand. These are the oval heads. I wish they were tapered because tapered can get into tight little areas a little bit better. And 23 gauge wire, I'm not, I don't need the extra meat that an oval head gives you. But I'll take and put, I don't put the cutting side down. I put the, the dull side down so I don't accidentally cut some of my wires that okay and then we line it up so what I'm gonna do is the orange blue and brown and I'm gonna save the green for last because green straddles the blue as I'm lining this up and I got the jaw way open here because I had a mandrel in it and that is the first downside of using a jump ringer from this you have to get a lot of material into the jaw because these jaws are meant to hold a mandrel so if you look at the center of that you can see that it's open but you feed enough material in there there'll be enough surface area making contact you'll have enough friction where you can give it a light pull I need the orange to be on this side the the south side and the solid sorry the orange stripe to be on the south orange solid to be on the north so what you do when you get here is you just bring it back a little bit and now you're unwinding it in the jacket and then you can wind it back and now you've got two straight lines that are facing the right way. So we'll loosen that. And then when we go to the blue, for the blue, we need the solid to be on the south and the stripe to be on the north. So we'll lock this in, go ahead and unwind it. And it, it's gonna, naturally, it's gonna wanna lay with the stripe on the south. We'll just undo it a little bit more. So we're untwisting it in the jacket and I'm looking at the camera instead of looking at what I'm doing. There we go. So we've got the, the stripe naturally laying here. Solid, solid stripe. Uh, the green stripe goes in between there, but we're going to do that last. Get this locked in. And for the brown, we want the stripe to be on the south, which that looks like it wants to lay naturally on the south. So now we're good here. Okay, we've, we've got a good start. All we have to do is take the green and then we're gonna have it straddle the blue. So let's put that into place. 
And I made a dozen patch cables with this and it was wonderful. And then I had an even better idea. Uh, so we want the stripe to be on the north, solid south. That's good. And I'm not worried about the, the top of it or, or still connected. I just bend it outwards and then have it straddle the blue. And these are all laying naturally in the right order at this point. We just take and tighten it up a little bit. And then take our Lindstrom's and we're going to go at an angle here. Clip that in the trash. We're going to take our head and we've got brown on this side so we need to put it here. And the holes are going to be on the top so we're going to feed it. I'm going to go up and in. I'm going to push to the side and up at the same time and it will naturally go in to where it needs to be. I'm not even going to look at it. I know it's right. I've been doing this for hours and every time it just goes into the right hole because everything I'm not forcing it to be in the right position. I, I did that with the jump ringer. It's naturally laying in the position it should be in. So if you just gently glide it in, it will always sit in that position. Let's get our cable stay up on here. And then I'll do this uh, upside down so you can see. When you put this in, oh, wrong side. It is, it's upside down to me too. Okay, just put your uh, little cable stay, get that in there so the whole thing is in. Give it a little squeeze. And there you go. So as wonderful as this was, the fact that the hole is a little bit open and that you have to clamp it to a bench, you're not going to be able to freehand this. You've, you've got to clamp it down to something. I wanted something a little bit more mobile. And I might use this if I was, you know, at a nice desk, having to do that all day. But if I want to be mobile, I came up with something better. And that is this little micro um, micro chuck. And the wonderful thing about this is it goes flush. It will close up flush. Can you see? Yeah. Now my first thought was not to put it on this contraption. My first thought was get a nice ratcheting screwdriver. You'll have a handle for a little extra leverage to, to lock it down and unlock it. And then you could just re unwind the cable that way. The problem is you have to give it a little bit of a tug as you're doing it in order to keep that to get the wire to end up being straight. And that means you need a little locking. Um, you need a little lock with a little ball bearing inside to, to grab onto that little neck and keep it from coming out of the tool. When I was looking through my toolbox, I found this. It's, you know, made for using your impact at a little bit of an angle. It's a giant spring with a lock. The retaining clip on the lock is broke, so I've got a little piece of uh, gaffer tape keeping it in place. But this is locked in, so I can pull on it, and it gets better. If you over-tighten this, if you hand-tighten it, and you just you can't, you don't have enough leverage, it's a spring. Turn it into a T-handle and break it. So I can really lock this thing down, and I can really get it to pop back open uh, just by taking the straight spring and turning it into a T-handle. So it's wonderful. This is like the perfect attachment to have on it is a little uh, spring. So let's do the other end and just get our Lindstrom's here. Clip that. Oop, stuck to the Band-Aid. I wish I would have figured this out years ago, but it took uh, a lot of pain and trash fingers for me to figure out that I could just do this. All right, so let's start with the orange. We'll go ahead and feed it in as far as it'll go and then lock it down and we're pulling back. So this time orange needs orange stripe needs to be on the north. So we're going to unwind it and it looks like that's where it naturally wants to lay so we don't have to unwind any more inside the housing. And we'll do blue. We want our solid to be on top. So we'll unwind this. And it looks like the stripe wants to lay on top, so we'll go a little bit past and back. And now our solid lays on top. And brown, striped is north. There we go. 
and the grandfather clock is telling me that uh, it is way late. Oops, should have unwound that one more time. There we go, and now we just need the uh, green to straddle. So we'll take the green one here. And for the green to straddle, we want stripe on the south. And it looks like stripe naturally wants to lay on the north, so we'll over rotate it. And then we'll over rotate it. And then go back a little bit. Yeah. We'll take our green, split it open just a little bit. Oh, it came apart on the top, but it doesn't need to. We straddle the blue, bring the brown in, bring the orange in, give it a little work flat, and then take our clippers and go out of 45 across the whole bundle. It wasn't quite a 45, but it should still work. And this time we're going here, the hole's on the bottom, so I'm going to go down into that corner and they're all going to feed one at a time, nice and neat, into their holes. I don't need to look at it. I'll show you that it did it correctly. And then we get our uh, no snag on here. And I'll do this upside down again. So it goes in, you push your, you push your whole no snag into the tool. It'll seat, give it a little pinch. Oh, one of the wires didn't cut. Come on. And there you go. Perfect patch cable. Much easier to do. I can't believe it took me this long to, to think of this thing. And it's mobile. It's going in my tool bag.